Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of death. As our global population continues to age, pressure mounts for researchers and clinicians to advance cardiac care. Nuclear cardiology is a leading modality to assess cardiac health and non-invasive perfusion imaging provides insights that help shape the management of the patient. But no imaging modality is perfect. There are opportunities to improve diagnostic tests to achieve more positive clinical and economic outcomes. This is where the University of Ottawa Heart Institute comes into play. The University of Ottawa Heart Institute is Canada's largest and foremost heart health centre dedicated to understanding, treating and preventing heart disease. Renowned for its clinical service excellence and high patient satisfaction rates, the team at Ottawa Heart provides unparalleled cardiac care. Current diagnostic tests have their limitations and Ottawa Heart is determined to address them. It starts with myocardial blood flow, which provides the functional information missing in SPECT perfusion cardiac exams. This four-part series will cover the ongoing research and early evidence into the clinical utility of myocardial blood flow. My name is Benjamin Chow. I'm a cardiologist at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. I'm the Director of Cardiac Imaging at the Heart Institute. My areas of interest are non-invasive imaging, uh, which include nuclear cardiology, cardiac PET, and cardiac CT. At rest, coronary flow travels down the coronary arteries um, and feeds the myocardium and heart muscle with both oxygen and fuel. As individuals increase their activity, such as when they get up and walk or if they were to exert themselves, there is a need to supply the myocardium and heart muscle with increased oxygen and fuel, and that is done by increasing flow of blood down the coronary arteries, which we refer to as coronary flow. If coronary blood flow or blood supply does not increase appropriately to meet the demands of the heart, we actually observe several things. The first that occurs typically is something called diastolic dysfunction, where the heart or the heart muscle does not relax normally. As ischemia progresses and there is an inadequate supply of blood flow to the myocardium, we then observe systolic dysfunction, where the heart does not contract normally and perhaps we get a reduction in cardiac output. As ischemia then progresses to the next level, then patients begin to have symptoms. And these symptoms are typically manifested by chest pain or shortness of breath or what we would consider angina. Heart disease is actually extremely prevalent or common in North America. Uh, we know that approximately 5% of individuals uh, in North America are living with heart disease at this time. In North America, there is one cardiac death every seven minutes. What we can do with new technologies is actually measure blood flow at rest and compare it to blood flow at stress. And looking at the ratio or the relationship between these two, calculate something called myocardial blood flow reserve. This gives us a sense or a measure as to how well the coronary arteries can adapt when under stress. The myocardial blood flow reserve differs somewhat from FFR, fractional flow reserve that's measured in the cath lab. Myocardial blood flow reserve takes into account not only coronary flow, but also flow in the microvasculature. We recognize that heart disease is a, a global disease entity, um, and it's a global epidemic. We also recognize that there are many developing countries uh, out there. And as these countries continue to develop, we anticipate seeing an increase in prevalence of heart disease. Implementation of new technologies that would facilitate the better detection, more accurate detection of coronary disease would be extremely important both in our current developed countries but also those in which we believe heart disease will increase in prevalence. Dr. Samir Hazra, who recently completed his cardiac imaging fellowship at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute and is now a consultant cardiologist and echocardiography lab co-director at the Montford Hospital and Ottawa Cardiovascular Centre, talks about the opportunity to expand beyond traditional SPECT perfusion imaging. Stress myocardial perfusion imaging remains a very good modality to assess for the presence of obstructive coronary artery disease with a sensitivity of approximately 
Traditional myocardial perfusion imaging assumes that the area of highest myocardial activity is normal. This area then provides a reference for the rest of the perfusion interpretation. Issues arise when the area of highest myocardial activity is not normal, as occurs in cases of multivessel coronary artery disease and microvascular disease. In these instances, relative perfusion imaging will lead to an under-representation of the severity and extent of disease. The incidence of multivessel coronary artery disease in patients with intermediate to high pretest probability is frequent and expect systems without access to attenuation correction can commonly underdiagnose multivessel disease. This in turn leads to less aggressive therapy and revascularization, which in essence amounts to undertreatment of patients. One proposed solution to this problem has been the assessment of absolute myocardial blood flow, and many studies have shown incremental diagnostic and prognostic information from absolute blood flow measurement with PET. What if there was an opportunity to increase diagnostic confidence of cardiac SPECT exams, one of the most common diagnostic tests, and therefore the value of nuclear cardiology to your referring physicians? Using absolute myocardial blood flow assessments, University of Ottawa Heart Institute is exploring new ways to improve the accuracy of SPECT diagnoses. This skilled team is using nuclear cardiology and leveraging novel technologies to achieve incredible results. But before we get to those, stay tuned for the next video module where we will investigate what other methods can be used to assess myocardial blood flow measurements and how SPECT imaging can help solve the issue of elusive multivessel diseases and microvascular abnormalities.